the massive Chinese cities that you've never heard of yet. But because they're gonna tell us right now. And you might be from China. Yeah, so maybe you know the cities. I mean, I, I don't know every city in the U.S. I know all, probably all the massive ones, but... Well, well, what about North Platte, Nebraska? That is my favorite city. It has a Wendy's and a lot of car dealerships. And Perkins, they burnt my pancakes. And it's flat as nuts. Wow, that was a very, very... Um, I know you can all relate to that, so... Yeah, it's a relatable experience, so we're just... That's just how we are, you know? When... Perkins burns your pancakes in North Platte, <laughs> Nebraska. And we just love to bring that, that relatableness to you guys. You guys, we went to China, actually. We went to uh, the Guangdong province in China. Uh, That's actually likely relatable to you guys if you are yeah. from Guangdong. So if you want to check out our travel vlogs there, you can check it out. Link in the description below. We also have a ton of clips on this channel from that series. If you want to subscribe to here, too, so you can get all the epic content. Let us know some more videos we can react to. Uh, we already have a ton of other reactions on China on this channel. But we'd love some more suggestions. Very, very helpful. This is Fushan. It's <gasps> a city that was home to just 758,000 people in 1985. Huh. Only 758,000 people. That's it. Come uh, on. Now almost the same size as Hong Kong. That's crazy. And yet, despite its population of 7.4 million people, it's most more of than our entire state. Best that we've never heard of it. It's a story. We have heard of it because we were going to go there and then the bullet train was full. And I watched Ip Man recently and that's where it was set. Oh. That's repeated time and time again with massive cities across this vast country. And it speaks to the insane urbanization of this emerging superpower over the past 30 years. Quick, I mean, sustained, on a huge scale. I guess and it's still growing but is china an emerging superpower or is it yeah. like the second strongest country in the world yeah that's kind of a weird thing it's all happening while other countries were distracted with their own problems these are the massive chinese cities you've never heard of yet yet and until now 60 percent of china's 1.4 billion citizens now live in cities but it a wasn't always like this with some of the most productive agricultural land in the world, the population used to be spread across rural areas. Then, in the 1970s and 80s, social and economic reforms triggered the start of a major transition to urban living, and many of the country's small villages transformed into enormous metropolises. Today, more than a hundred... That one has a frackin' ball building. A golden ball. ...in 13 cities have a population of over a million people. Oh, and the country is home to more of the Jeez. world's largest cities. U.S. cities, what's like the... I know Phoenix has about a million people. I'm trying to think of like the biggest or the smallest city. Like the one, the, the, the last one that's at like a million. I don't even know. U U.S. population for cities are weird. They're really weird. It's like the Minneapolis metro area. It's only like four... Yeah, the Minneapolis city is 400,000. Yeah. And then St. Paul is like 300 or 200,000. I don't know. These cities are so much bigger. Cities than anywhere else. It's a rate of progression that was only really made possible by a long-term strategic plan to control urban growth. Oh, those cars go really fast. Yeah, the majority heck? of China's... That's just the Chinese ingenuity. They become fast cars. <laughs> large city... They're maglev cars. ...is concentrated in the northeast. I totally thought to this reforms, light blue was water. Special I economic zones were established to shift the country's economic center south, while small and medium-sized mm. cities across China were designated free trade, high-tech, economical, and technological development zones to cities. ensure investment, jobs, and population growth were not just limited to a handful of areas. These idea. widespread and varied economic incentives coupled with massive... Vong K? That does not sound like a Chinese company. No, it sounds like... Vong K? Sounds like, thank you. I am from... I am from Germany. Vong K? Thank you very much. Widespread and varied economic incentives coupled with massive government spending on infrastructure to better connect the country allowed new cities to seemingly grow out of nowhere at a rate that remains unmatched at That'd be pretty interesting to see. Industry. Same building over and over The likes of over. Shenzhen, Guangzhou oh, and Wuhan oh. are now more widely known. Dozens of others are yet to achieve the same notoriety despite now having enormous populations and playing an increasingly important oh, role in the global economy. We we didn't go on the tower. It's expensive. 
Mm. Duyang is a classic Ooh, example of this. Home to 900,000 people before the reforms, it's now a city of 3.4 million, wow. despite sitting more than 550 kilometers That's from the sea. Lacking the easy access to global markets that coastal cities enjoy, Guyang's economy transformed from one centered around machine manufacturing and mining to services, with an emphasis on computing and big data. Foxconn, Microsoft and Huawei all now run offices in the city. Despite now boasting a modern skyline... I think, it, I think it would be very, very interesting to visit just like random cities like this one kind of that like no vlogger or like very, very few foreigners ever go to. And then I think it would be very interesting to try to like go to stores and restaurants and people would be like, um... Because where you get that, not much in Guangzhou, but we get that like a lot of times in... Like India or Philippines, if you go to like the big cities, you won't get it too much. But then when you go to like the smaller cities, all of a sudden everyone's like, whoa, 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 whoa. So it'd be crazy to see what that would be like in China. Yeah. I mean, we might literally be like some of the cities, obviously a city with 3 million people, there's going to be white people there because there's going to be business stuff. But if we went to like a smaller one with like maybe a few hundred thousand, like we did in India, people would be like, what the heck? I felt like never seen anybody there. It'd be so like we to do a road trip in uh, China. We can't rent a car though. No. So it'd be more of like a train bus trip. And hopefully that goes well. Yu Yang has retained many historical sites, including the Qingyan ancient town and Jiaxiu pavilion, which have contributed to a growing tourism base. Though still small for China, the city opened its first metro line in 2017 and mm. has two more already under construction. Yeah, a nice. network of eight is planned in total. Wow, eight, wow. Heading to the east coast, Wuxi forms part of the Wuxi. Yangtze Delta megalopolis that's now home to over 75 million people. Nestled between Shanghai and Nanjing, the city's gone from 850,000 residents in 1985 to 3.3 million today. That's bigger than Athens. When the Wuxi new district was created in 1992, it began to turn the city into one of China's major industrial parks and a center for scientific and industrial innovation. The likes of Siemens, Hitachi, Volvo and AstraZeneca are now all based there. So I'm curious, so like Shanghai and this Wuxi city, they're very close together. Are they actually going to have like different foods being that close or is that to the point where like their culture has been so similar this whole time where it wouldn't change that much and it might be even like this could be wuxi could be slowly turning into more of a suburb of shanghai yeah. at that point i don't know because like in italy or like a country like that where it was it broke apart into so many different like states at one point like you can go from city to city and they'll have different cuisine but is that going to happen like the city's that close in china or not There's a lot of people so maybe let us know down in the comments. This abundance of multinationals has transformed the skyline and 21 skyscrapers have been built since 2005. Three super talls were opened in 2014 alone. Tourism's also played a part in the city's growth, particularly as it boasts one of the world's tallest statues, uh -huh. the 79 meter Grand Buddha at Lingshan. Ooh, For comparison, fake. the Statue of Liberty is just 46 meters tall without its base. Come on, French, you should have built From us a, a city bigger of one. just half a million people in 1984, Ningbo, also on China's east coast, is now the same size as Rome and Montreal, with a population of 4.2 million. Wow. Designated as one of 14 open coastal cities in 1984, that's a special type of economic zone for port cities, Ningbo now acts as a trade hub for the southern Yangtze River Delta. And since its merger with the neighboring Zhou Shan in 2006, it's become one of the busiest ports in the world. As a result, Ningbo forms a major part of China's 21st century maritime Silk Road initiative, better connecting Eastern China with Europe. The city's transformation has seen it develop an impressive and modern skyline boasting 22 skyscrapers with a further 12 currently under construction, including the 409 meter Ningbo Center. Oh, that's quite that story of Fushan's little-known size is actually all to do with its location. The city sits close to Guangzhou, which has a population of 13 million people, and forms part of the Pearl River Greater Bay Area, where it's overshadowed by the likes of Macau, Shenzhen and Hong Kong. To say that Fushan is a major manufacturing hub is a bit of an understatement. There are now more than 3,000 factories in the city, producing more of the world's electrical appliances than anywhere else. 
If you've purchased an air conditioner or fridge since 2014, there's a 50% Haven't. chance it was no. made right here. But maybe soon. Yeah. Sitting in the country's Six. northeast, Jinan is now the same size as Barcelona, having grown its population to 5.6 million from just 1.3 million That's back crazy. in 1983. Where the heck did those waterways come from? The city is one of China's main tech hubs, with the Jinan High Tech Industrial Zone and the Jinan Export Processing Zone, leading to the likes of Panasonic, Volvo, and Sanyo all setting up operations there. Hmm. Since the completion of its first skyscraper in 1997, Jinan's skyline now rivals Los Angeles, with 27 skyscrapers already complete, and a further uh, oh. seven currently under construction. Despite this rapid change, Jinan's managed to remain one of the greenest cities in China, accommodating much of its booming population in dense high-rise districts, while allowing oh, extensive wow. green space nice. to cover large parts of the city. The other countries Do have a seen... That's in China? China? What? what? I didn't know that. I thought we flew to the Middle East. We were in China the whole time. I guess we've been to China twice now. Uh, actually, more. We've been to Dubai. Yeah. How many times? Four, technically, if we flew out and flew yeah, back yeah. in. I know, guys. <laughs> Rich. In huge growth over the we definitely same didn't time, stay in the cheapest nothing place in comes the close to the scale or pace of what's happened in China since the it's 1980s. Hard. While many of the country's massive new cities are yet to reach the same level of name recognition as others in the West, their role in global trade and China's growing influence means it's only a matter of time before they become household names. There's no way that everyone's gonna know, like, no. all these cities. A lot of people who are from the US don't know a lot of big US cities. Yeah. Even still. I mean, like, every country probably has, like, their one or two big ones. Not every country, but, like, the major countries. Like, I mean, like, Par or France, that's a pretty major country. People probably know, like, Nice, Paris. I would bet, like, probably 60% of people only know Paris, too. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, and then, like, India. Mumbai, Delhi. Mm -hmm. And there's so many big cities there, yeah. too. It's interesting. I don't just... I guess people associate countries with, like, a few cities, usually. Yeah, I would say China would be Shanghai, Beijing. Yeah. Literally. Guangzhou wasn't on our radar at all. No, we didn't really know much about it. And t Japan, Tokyo, Osaka. Mm -hmm. Those are probably the ones. And then Korea has big cities, and most people only know Seoul. Yeah, I mean... Train to Busan is a movie, and that's why we would know Bus Busan yeah. before. <laughs> Literally. If you enjoyed this video and you want oh, to get over. more from oh. the I'm surprised they didn't say, he said Foshan, but he didn't say Dongguang. That was a surprisingly large city. Was bigger than Foshan? Yeah, it was like 8 mil. So that's pretty crazy. And that one's also manufacturing. That's like even more of a manufacturing city, I think, than, uh, than Foshan. So, I mean, I can't imagine the cities we could just stumble upon in China. But here's another question I have. Are the cities, like, if we, like, do city jumping, do we have to go, like, cross-country for them to actually, like, change a lot? Or is it going to mm. be very similar if we, like, jump from city to city? And we're going to be like, oh, you know, this. if we go to the city next to Shanghai, are we going to be like, oh, this kind of looks like Shanghai? It would be nice to switch it up a decent amount, get some nature in there even. Yeah. Too. So, I mean, let us know some really cool cities that you think would be a lot different than, like, maybe Guangzhou or Shenzhen, which are the ones we've gone to already. Because, I mean, we want to see nature. We want to try a lot of different foods and things. So, let us know. We have, we're, op we're an open book. We don't know where to go. Right in the book. Did you just write the middle of the Himalayan or the Tibetan plateau? Yes, we're going there. We're oh. going to ride some yaks. Yeah, we're going to find the Yeti, finally. Oh. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.